Well, government officials are urging you to be more skeptical about the labels on everyday products. Our national investigate team's Lee Zurich breaks down why and shares one family's heartbreaking story. Seven years ago, the word non-toxic was part of a selling point for Ashley Haugen and her husband to agree to buy their older daughter water beads. You would think if something said non-toxic that it literally meant that it had nothing in it that was potentially harmful. That's what you would think. And that is not the case. <laughs> Ashley said they did harm her then one-year-old daughter, Kipley, who got a hold of the little squishy beads despite playing in a separate area. When these little beads are dry, they're the size of a sprinkle. We had followed all the best advice, and yet we were sitting here in the hospital. We all just sat and prayed, and the surgeon came out, and he showed us a picture. And he said, do you know what this is? And the picture was of the water bead material that we had purchased for Abigail's sixth birthday. You don't feel good. Kipley initially seemed to recover, but then she began having movement and other issues, some of which persist today. The developmental pediatrician, he ruled everything else that it could possibly be out, and he diagnosed her with toxic brain encephalopathy which is a brain injury due to exposure to chemicals. Are water beads non-toxic or toxic? I wouldn't trust any non-toxic labeling on water beads. You know, there, there's companies marking that on products, and there's not standards out there that say what non-toxic means. The Consumer Product Safety Commission oversees thousands of product categories in the United States, but the way laws are written, they often have to negotiate with manufacturers and can't make immediate warnings. Those can take months or years. And according to Commissioner Richard Trumpka, the word non-toxic is no guarantee, especially when it comes to water beads. CPSC has conducted testing of water beads and found concerning levels of acrylamides. It's not a label that the companies have run by us and gotten our approval on or any other government agency. So uh, I wouldn't take them at face value. And with no pre-approval of these labels by our regulatory agency and the inability for the government to test every single product that goes to market, non-toxic has become nonsense to parents like Ashley. All of us were thinking, okay, non-toxic, it should be fine. She should be fine. In December, Trumpka wrote to major retailers asking them to stop selling water beads. Many of them quickly made that commitment to pull products, Target, Walmart, Amazon and others. Our team has watched listings disappear slowly online and products removed from shelves. But we found there are still plenty of listings for water beads to be used in flower vases or as decor. Some of them still brightly colored and appear to have been previously sold or used as toys. Ashley is now known as that water bead lady, a title she proudly took as a representative for other parents. Both she and Commissioner Trumpka support a bill that would ban water beads, and she says there's more to be done. If we're supposed to protect our kids, which is what most loving, caring parents want to do, then we need that information in order to keep our kids safe. And that was Lee Zurich. In the PD, a former Marlboro County deputy made his first appearance in federal court. Charles Lemon is accused of using excessive force on an inmate back in 2020. And our Samuel Shelton was inside the courtroom, has the latest on what happened. Charles Lemon's defense team says they can attest to his character of not being a flight risk or a threat to the community. Former Marlboro County Sheriff Charles Lemon pleaded not guilty to deprivation of civil rights. It all stems from the May 2020 incident where Lemon allegedly ordered a former deputy to repeatedly use a stun gun on an inmate. Inside the courtroom, Assistant U.S. Attorney Lauren Hummel asked a judge to grant a bond the court deemed appropriate. One of Lemon's attorneys stated he knew Lemon throughout his law enforcement career and ensured the judge he wasn't a threat or danger to the community. The judge issued a personal recognizance bond, which means he was released without having to provide money up front. The judge did set some bond conditions, which includes not traveling outside of South Carolina and not contacting the victim. On behalf of my co-counsel and our client, 
Charles Lemon, I would just say that the video does not tell the whole story, and we look forward to the whole story of being told through a jury trial. Now, Lemon's attorney said based on video evidence, there are two sides to the story. They look forward to telling the full story to a jury. In Florence, Sam Shelton, WBF News. Welcome back. It's 743. Record show Kevon Lawhorn has posted bond nearly four months after Horry County police say he allegedly gunned down 23-year-old Starquan Washington outside of a now closed Sacristy area bar. The news, though, is not sitting well with Washington's loved ones, some of whom claim that he should have never been let out of jail. I very much hate him. Um, I will never forgive him for what he's taken away from my son and from Starquan. Madison Kaufman is left to raise her son all by herself following Kayvon Lawhorn's alleged actions on the night of October 18th. She argues a judge was wrong to downgrade his murder charge last month to involuntary manslaughter, clearing the way for him to be released on bail. Honestly, um, I feel like the system has failed Starquan and his son. Lawhorn's attorney, on the other hand, refutes that claim, telling me the court did end up making the correct decision. A judge is entitled to reduce it to a lesser charge, which is what, what, what the judge did. We're told Lawhorn's bond restrictions will keep him at home until his trial. Something Kaufman tells me does bring her a shred of relief in this tragic situation. They told me that he would be on house arrest, so and I know he's not allowed to contact me, so I, I'm not fearful, more so just angry with how things have been handled. Little consolation for a mother planning ways to answer the questions, which will no doubt come as her now one-year-old son continues to grow. You know, I'm hoping I'll be handling it better than I am now because every day is just, it's just like, it's been three months and it hasn't, nothing has changed. It's, the pain is still very real. So there's no word yet on when Lawhorn is due back in court or when he will stand trial. We'll be right back.